In this video I'm going to take a look at question 1 from the 2016 higher level paper in construction studies and we'll go through it from the start and how you might approach the question. For First of all you're given clues in the question as to what they're looking for here. It's a front porch flat roof 1.5 meters. Uh, external wall of the house is shown and uh, uh, the porch is insulated. Cover with layers of bitumen felt, plywood decking, uh, 200 millimeter uh, roof and joists, insulated plasterboard concrete uh, block, 400 millimeter concrete block wall, full full cavity insulation and then all these other clues, external wall, flat roof, the window uh, of the porch is a triple base unit, uh, you're drawn from a level of 300 millimeters below the fixed frame of the porch and 400 millimeters above the abutment and I'm just highlighting each of the different things that are shown in the question which are your clues and the part B is to do with the uh, prevention of water coming in at the ingress at the junction between the roof and uh, the wall. So before I start any question I'd always sketch out kind of roughly what I'm uh, I'd been asked for in the, in the question and you can see there the 1.5 meters is showing the flat roof coming out. We've got uh, a 300 millimeters below the head of the window and 400 millimeters above the flat roof and the concrete wall. So just highlighting those things. There's a couple of dimensions here that we don't have and I'm highlighting circling these two parts here because what I'll show in the question as we go through it, uh, you could get all full marks in the question by just doing either one of those two sections on it. Not that that's the way to approach it. And a few dimensions there, but the scale of one is to five, I've just written down because it can speed things up along the way. So using that sketch is where my starting point is, and I'm drawing my cavity wall uh, on the external leaf and internal leaf and I've allowed for a soffit of 150 millimeters so that lets me know how far I can come across. Draw things lightly first of all and it's always easy to adjust afterwards and I'm allowing 450 millimeters above the head of the window to the bottom of the ceiling joist and the ceiling joist size is given in the question which is 200 by 40. Another thing then you'd want to is to do as I'm going along here is I'm adding in the furring pieces and I'm also adding in the counter battens, which um, I've put them in as 50 millimeter counter battens, 50 by 50. And uh, then you'll have your roof decking as well too. And you'll see all this as we go along. The usual stuff on a wall with a roof, you have a wall plate, which I'm highlighting in here. And I've put in a rough, just a rectangular shape for the head of my window. And I can put in the little bits of detail in that there. Not necessary to be very very accurate in that there but just to show that you have weathering positions in it and it tells me in the questions that thermally broken window as well so there has to be insulation on the inside of that there and just showing the section details then of the lintel and the blocks above that the cavity closures and uh, the cavity tie you put it in as a graphite tie because it has to be low conductivity and uh, it's going to cross a wider cavity as well too and I'm drawing the external plaster as well and I have an in internal plasterboard to the scene which would have a vapour check on it and um, that would be normally 50 millimetres you can see there my soffit and my fascia I've drawn in with the um, the, the bridging piece and a space for the vent as well the roof I've chosen to put it at a slope of 1 is to 40 once it's less than 10 degrees it's a flat roof you could go 1 is to 20 just for the scale that's in this here I went with 1 is to 40 and on my fascia board then I have a batten that's on the outside for the return down of the bitumous covering which will go down to my guttering. So you can see there I'm drawing in at spacings of 400 centres. I have uh, my 50 by 50 counter battens which allows the ventilation to go across the roof as well as along the roof. And then I put the decking on the top of it and I have a space that left at the wall as well too for to allow for the vent to come up against the wall and to be a prefabricated vent will be placed in there. I'm only highlighting the two blocks at the junction of the roof, the ceiling joist and the wall because they could be an aerated concrete block uh, to reduce the possibility of thermal bridging and uh, then I have to go about drawing some sort of a shape for my vent, my prefabricated vent and a tilting fillet as well too which I've shown here. It's pretty steep looking but I just wanted to kind of highlight it, it could, make it, could have made it a lot uh, thicker of itself but it would look kind of out of shape on the on the drawing. Uh, a gutter is shown in here as well too and um, we're getting pretty close on a lot of the detail here now in the drawing and really in the, the exam for this level of detail this would 
you'd be really really pushing it to be able to draw that inside of the time allocated around the 30 minute mark I would be saying you spend maybe 20 minutes on that there uh, you can see I've got a step DPC shown there now and I'm called using a bit of color you don't have to go to huge detail on that there the step DPC I put in is at a right angle um, it could be put in at an angle uh, over to the front face of the uh, cavity closure and the window as well to joist hanger stuff like that there be saying maybe 20 25 minutes of getting as much drawn as you possibly can when you hit that there point you want to start labeling stuff then and it's really no good drawing something without labeling it i've used a few colors here as well too for my air tightness tape for my breather membrane vapor barrier um bitumous roof covering as well too and all these will be labeled and that's what i'm starting to do here now i'm just labeling through each of these as we go uh, you'll be able to stop the video at the end and take a look at uh, each of the labels that I have on here and there's some that I even leave out at the end but you'll notice one thing must be very very clear in the marking scheme for this here you had to get 11 elements and if I never went above the ceiling joist I could probably have got my 11 elements without actually drawing anything above that but uh, to be on the safe side you would want to probably label about 15 16 elements uh, and just leave it comfortable for yourself to be able to do that allow yourself time in the exam to write in each of your details that you have drawn and like I say you could get full marks without actually completing that drawing to complete it to the standard I have here you'd be really really tightened to be able to do that there it would be incredibly difficult to do within the time that's allocated for that there but to get full marks you don't need to have that level of detail and I would be saying not to kill yourself on uh, trying to get absolutely everything in the drawing completed uh, make sure that you have 15-16 elements minimum to try and nail those elements that they're looking for in the exam like it showed you at the start with the sketch what I highlighted um, with the two different areas there's plenty of detail in that there I'd say if students didn't know full details of a flat roof they would still manage to get full marks in it if they knew the head and the window detail well and the same goes for a flat roof and not knowing the window detail well so that's pretty much it you can slow down the video and look back over it there for more detail